Hey everyone, well this is going to be my third and final video in my Starlink series. There's just really not that much else to report. So in this video I'm going to build a custom articulating roof mount for the roof of my shop and get the antenna mounted up there. And then I'll do a, I don't know, two or three or four day long timed speed test where it uh, uh, does an automated speed test once every 30 minutes. Then I'll show the results of that at the end of this video. And and really there's no more ideal location on my property than the roof of this shop right here. It's definitely got a clear view of the northern sky, so that's why I'm going to do that final speed test. There's really nothing in the antenna's field of views. So let's fire up the computer, uh, draw up something in Fusion 360, cut it out on the CNC table, and, and build ourselves a roof mount. A little bit of time in Fusion 360, and this is what I came up with. Basically it's just a flat plate that bolts to the roof and a couple of tabs with some arcs cut in them that will allow the sleeve that the antenna clips into to articulate about 60 degrees. Now, this was a piece of tube that was in my scrap pile, so I'm not really sure what it was. It might be Schedule 40 pipe, I'm not really sure. I need to take about uh, 10 more thousandths out of this thing. about perfect. All right, I've got a little bit of a bevel machined in the edge of this. I'm not going to try and countersink the holes or anything, but the dimensions should match up perfectly with the uh, factory tripod mount.
Alright, my adjustable, I don't know what you call it, hinge assembly thing is done. I've got a washer in between one side of that. That should just give me a little bit of space necessary so after I paint it I won't be scraping everything up when I finally assemble it. So, just gotta weld it now. seems to work exactly as designed. Well, the bracket's complete. I've hit it with some black hammerite paint. Uh, if I was going to plan on keeping this permanently installed, I'd definitely make it out of stainless, but uh, I didn't have any stainless this thin, and I didn't want to do it out of quarter-inch plate. So for now, it's painted steel. It'll last long enough, at least a few years for me. Well, there you can see it. The antenna's mounted on the roof of the shop up there, and uh, uh, we've got our speed test underway. We're gonna wait a few days here and see what kind of speeds we can actually get now that we've got the kind of ideal location. The first graph I'm gonna pull up here is from the testmy.net speed test. And this is the speed test program that I used in the past to gather all my tabular data, which I graphed myself, but this graph is generated from them. And so uh, the blue line and uh, blue numbers are my downstream speeds and the orange line are my upstream speeds. Now, uh, this was run every 30 minutes for four days straight. And uh, without getting into the weeds here too much, lots of things can affect the results of a speed test. Uh, this, the speed of the machine that is actually running the speed test, other devices on the network, the connectivity between the, the machine that's running the speed test and the router, the router itself, the connection between the antenna and the satellites, and the satellite's connection with the ground station, and so on and so forth. So lots of things can affect the speed test, and that's why I've liked to run multiple speed tests over a long range of time. But something interesting happened here. Uh, after the first day, you know, at first I was seeing my normal downstream speeds of around 60 megabits and uh, 20 megabits upstream. But after the first day, my downstream speeds dropped right away. And it looked to me like the speeds are being throttled um, relatively flat, right around 10 megabits for the next three days. And what was interesting was I popped in every now and then. I just left this test running, but then I ran speed tests on different servers and they were much faster, which tells me that for some reason my speed was being limited on the server that was being tested. So rather than go back and retest for four more days, you know, I'm seeing about the same numbers between 60 and 70 megabits, regardless of what server that I use. So I'll just pull up a couple of other individual speed tests here and uh, show you kind of what I'm seeing. And I really didn't see much change in my speed by relocating the antenna to the roof. As you can see here, the test on uh, testmy.net with a different server was a little bit faster. We got 54 megabits down and 20 megabits up. And the test from speedtest.net, uh, I got 78 down and 18 up with a 26 millisecond ping. That's pretty typical. And then from fast.com, uh, this one I believe pulls a test file from a Netflix server. Uh, this one you can see is 70 megabits down, 14 megabits up with a 28 millisecond ping. So, um, you, you know, my latency is pretty much the same across the board, no matter what server I'm using and speeds are, you know, between 60 and 70 pretty consistently. Now I know I've seen people post faster ones and I've gotten downstream speeds of around 150 megabits occasionally, but that's definitely not consistent. These numbers that I'm sharing here are really indicative of the average speeds that I've been seeing. Yeah, I hope you guys found the information useful. And like I said, this is probably gonna be the final video that I do on Starlink. There's just really not that much extra to share. I'll do an update in the future if the terms of service or speeds change or there's any additional information to share. But uh, yeah, again, hope you guys found it useful. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.